Our latest recruit on the field, please. This is a short training session. We have here a very grizzled warrior. He's about to take a young trainee through his paces. The Celts fought primarily with a single-handed short sword or broadsword. The big two-handed things that you see in the medieval movies didn't come for about one and a half thousand years after the Celts. They fought with single-handed weapons and they protected themselves with long shields. You dropped your knife. Okay, can we see a couple of experienced fighters now? <laughs> you notice that the Celts all look different. They don't wear uniform. Thank you. The Romans wore uniform. Some of the ancient cultures were very well organized in combat, but the Celts were uh, more along the lines of a rabble or a mob. They could be organized when it mattered, but the rest of the time, they were very individualistic. We have some evidence to suggest that certain tribes would paint their shields a particular colour or have a particular design on their shield but their clothing and their weapons are always different. These are two typical Celtic warriors. They have no armour. Very few Celts fought with armour. Only chiefs could afford it and they would wear armour like chain mail which the Celts invented and the Romans adopted from us. Contrary to what we may have thought. And we have a winner! Yay! Very good fight, thank you. And we see another couple now. These are one-on-one -on -one fights. The Celts took part in battles all across the classical world. They fought as mercenaries for the Greeks and the Romans and the Persians and anybody. And they fought wars amongst themselves, tribe against tribe. But the Celts had a very strong tradition of single combat. If two armies were facing one another, the Druids, who had a great deal of authority amongst the Celts, a Druid could travel anywhere throughout the entire Celtic Empire and be safe, no matter whose tribal lands he was on. A Druid might decide that he didn't want to see a big battle fought, and would ask for trial or combat of champions where each tribe would choose its best fighter and the two fighters would fight in view of both armies and whoever won would be considered to have won the battle for his entire tribe a noble tradition which no doubt saved a great deal of bloodshed thank you can we see another couple on please yay <laughs> now you may find it odd to see a woman fighting on the field. <laughs> this was not so odd amongst the Celts. Romans, of course, had no female fighters. The Greeks didn't, but the Celts did. There was a great tradition amongst the Celts of equality in combat between the men and the women. A Greek writer, Posidonius, said that when the Celts chose the commanders of their armies, they made no distinction as to sex. I'm sure you've all heard of Boudicca, sometimes known as Bodicea, which is a misprint, who led the Achaeni against the Romans and an army of 200,000 Celts following her. But there are other references to women fighting in the Celtic myth, where the greatest heroes, such as Cochlin and Finn McCool, were themselves trained by female battle masters, such as Scorthach. Thank you. See an example of spear fighting now. When the Celts weren't fighting with swords and shields, they fought with spears. A spear was a good first weapon for a young Celt because it was reasonably cheap, having only a certain amount of metal in the blade, and the rest of it was just wood. It also meant that when you fought in your first battle, you could fight from the second rank over the shoulders of the first rank. So you didn't have to face a battle hardened warrior toe to toe in your first fight.
That's a nice piece of life work. I think it's time we uh, we did a couple of raiding parties fighting one another. Shall we see a couple of lines, please? We're now going to split this little tribe. <coughs> Rather like the affair of Deirdre and Noishu split the tribe of Ulster between Fergus's men and those of King Conchibor. That's a very esoteric reference. If any of you got that, I'd, be love, I'd love to talk to you later on. When Celts fought, they fought over land, cattle, insults, honour, all kinds of things. It was said of the Celts that they were madly fond of battle and quick to war, but were otherwise not of an evil disposition. I guess those were just the times. It's <laughs> a very good impression of the dying Gaultich. <laughs> He's still alive. Did it see any particular side win? <laughs> Is any side prepared to surrender? <laughs> I, I, I think we will call that quits, actually. <laughs> That's two one-legged warriors left now. In the Celtic myths, there are numerous descriptions of warriors continuing to fight, even having received the most absurd and extreme injuries. But Rich has won! Well done! Now, that was, uh, that was two small raiding parties fighting one another. Let the dead arise! Does, does anybody have the energy? Before we go off, do a circle of treachery. Yeah. Right, take your positions, please. The circle of treachery is not actually Celtic. It's a reenactor thing. The, the rule's are very simple. Anybody who wants to take part stands in a large circle. And then when I say go, it's every man or woman or his or herself. And the last person standing is the winner. Injuries are counted on an honest basis. If you're hit with a sword, then you act as if you're hit by a sword. Nobody's wearing armour, so there are no complicated rules regarding number of hits versus chainmail. Are we ready? Get set. Fight with honour! You notice that normally the Celts would not use their swords for parrying. That's why their swords had such small hilts, they just weren't used for that. The shield was used for defence. <laughs> well, that was quickly, uh, I think was a, you may think that was dishonourable, but this is the circle of treachery. Very good. Thank you. Let the dead arise. Now, we're about to leave the field shortly, and uh, the line dancing will be on after us, but before we go, we'd just like to show you one more thing. The last thing most Romans ever saw when they came to our shores. Now, I want you to remember what the Romans were like. They were terribly civilised. They actually had hot water and baths. And they came to this country from the emperors of divine Claudius, and this is what they have to face. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We were Brigantia.